describe your relationship with Jalen as a work in progress? Here it's entering your fourth year. How is your relationship with Jalen? Maybe how did last year test it? You know, the uh, only thing you can judge your relationships on, relationships on is your personal interactions with people, not any report that comes out. And, you know, uh, Jalen and I's relationship is good. Uh, it's – Again, you, you just can judge it based off of what your personal re interactions are. And so when you hear a report like that, you don't put much stock into it because, quite frankly, not everybody sees that. So I'm ex so excited uh, for him and I to uh, get into our fourth year together. We've done some pretty special things, and I'm really excited for him. He's worked so hard at his game. I'm excited for him to be able to get back out here today and and uh, and have a good practice today. And uh, yeah, just looking forward to continuing to work with him and uh, continue to build on the special things that we've done. What's it changed your your role a little bit? How has that changed your relationship with Jim? You have to work so hard. You know what? That that's a good that's a good question because I'm I'm not in that quarterback room all the time anymore. So it's like some of those times you you'd have those the natural relationship because you're always in there. But what I think's been beneficial for that that everybody needs that time with me, not just me being in the quarterback room, me being able to be in the defensive end room, me being able to go into the linebacker room. So naturally, when you're not just with the quarterbacks, you have to carve out a little bit more time to talk to them, uh, you know, that that you wouldn't get um, when you're in there all the time. So, yeah, you, you work – you do that for – I do that for every position, and now you just – I just have to do that a little bit more with the quarterback position because I'm not in there full time. To both of you, I guess there was a report about the coordinators and how he, you involved in the hiring. Nick, you've talked about it. Could you guys kind of clarify that process? I, 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 can, I can do it. I feel included a little bit in this kind of <laughs> Um, is this like work? Is this like the dress work? Yeah, no, that's exactly what I was thinking. I don't think this works. Um, you know, I think through our process of looking at our first round pick, I feel like um, myself, our scouts, we had great in information on him. Um, obviously, he went to Toledo. Nick's college roommate is the head coach of Toledo. Um, when Nick came to me and he said, hey, I got this information on Q." It made me feel much better about the selection that we already felt good about. It's the same process for when we do coaches. You know, Nick will come to me and say, these are the guys I'm thinking about. Do you have any relationship? Do you know these guys? You know, obviously, I've been in the league a long time. I had prior relationships with both of those guys. It makes him feel better about the decision he's making. I mean, these aren't under-the-radar guys. These are talented guys that have been in the league for a long time. And... That's how good organizations make decisions. At the end of the day, I'm responsible for the players that I bring in here, uh, draft, free agency, uh, and he's responsible for his coaching staff. But we work together. You know, that's the whole part of being a team. How is our first time speaking to these staff changes? Uh, what factor into those, and how's it different without that? <laughs> Yeah, I think you're constantly looking at, um, at ways to evolve uh, as a staff. You're kind of looking uh, at things that you can do uh, different. Um, and I think from, from our perspective, we made a bunch of staff changes. Um, I think a total of six people um, have kind of changed roles. Um, we're excited about that. Uh, we wish all the best to the people who, who left here. And, and obviously, you know, as we go through the 2024 season starting today, really excited about that. And we'll all be judged on, on the results. Nick, what kind of changes should we expect to see out here, whether it's length of practice, physicality, or whatever? Yeah, you know, the, obviously this first week is going to be, you know, it, there's an acclimation period that everybody has to go through, um, you know, week in, week out, uh, but particularly that first week. Um, you know, you'll you'll see some different things, but, again, that's, that is so – that's so um, – fluid like you're always constantly like to this morning I added 10, 10 12 plays to practice I'm like hey we felt good yesterday guys came back in great shape you know what I, I want to work a situational period today that's going to add a couple plays I want to work a conditioning period today that's going to add a couple plays but that that changes based off uh, of how the day is and and how you think the guys are that's just something that's completely fluid um, you'll see a lot of the same things, um, and, and there'll be obviously differences. There's, everything was evaluated last year uh, from last year, and, and again, don't want to belabor and talk about. We've we've answered all the questions from last year. We've talked about that, um, but the things that we learned from, right? Every practice length, 
uh, practice schedule, schemes, um, everything's been evaluated and everything that we felt like needed to be tweaked uh, has been tweaked. Now, as far as uh, acquisition, I know you're always talking about acquisition period runs up to the trading deadline. And Always looking at the roster and ways to improve it. He's looking at means. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Less. Yeah. But anyway, when you look at this roster now, how do you evaluate it? Are you, are you happy with it? I mean, do you see any strengths, weaknesses, anything like that you can share? With me? Probably look at it a little differently. You know, um, I don't think that um, I'm ever looking at it kind of in those terms. Uh, I feel really excited about the opportunity to evaluate these guys on a daily basis and see where we are as a team, see where we are as a roster. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time making sure that we know every player that's on our 90-man, 90 91-man roster at this time um, and be open to ideas about improving that roster. You know, I think that when uh, you get in a position in this league and you feel good about something, it's a very humbling league and, and things happen. So you know, it's, it's our opportunity to constantly um, have our eyes open about what we see, you know, the, the beautiful thing, uh, I said it to a coach this morning, the beautiful thing uh, about it is everyone here is ours, you know. So you're not playing favorites because you've brought everyone in here, you know. At the same token, um, we have an obligation to put the best team forward, uh, whether that's uh, including the practice squad and the 53-man roster, and we'll never be content, you know. That would be a disservice to our to our fans, to our players, to our coaches. Nick, how are you mad at that? Uh, Nick, sir, uh, excuse me, Gellin first expressed uh, you know, this may in fact that we've had to change coordinators, open schemes on this on a yearly basis this past year. Obviously, the schedule has really changed even in this last, last all season. Just that he wish he had coaching consistency, such as like maybe a Jeff Stoutman of the offensive line here on the team. There's, there seems to be a discrepancy between what he thinks is going to be 95% changing in the offense versus what you have said. How much new, how much more does he have to learn this all season? Uh, we're, we're all in a, a work in progress as far as learning different things uh, on our on our offense, on our defense, on our special teams, things we're doing, situational football. Um, you know, obviously everything we do as far as, you know, changes we make in the staff, changes we make to, uh, you know, your offense or your defense is all for the what we believe is good for the team and um, will help us. Um, you know, even, even staffs that have – you know, so, you know the the same play caller. They tweak things year in year out, right? Because if you stay still in this league, this league will catch up to you quickly. And so, you know, as far as the percentage or anything like that, we are working to do what we what we do best. So, you know, like I said, there are things that you know there are things that uh, we've done well in the past that we'll continue to do. There's things that are going to be new tweaks and new things and new things completely. Uh, and and like I said to you guys, I think I said this after, like, uh, as far as a play may look exactly the same on tape, right? You may say, okay, you're, I'm looking at this play. Oh, I saw them run that play a bunch last year, and they ran it a bunch this time. But sometimes you're 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 coaching it a little bit differently, and that's evolving as an offense. That's evol like you. That happens even when you have the same a, a similar staff, you know, similar staff. But there are people that are same on the staff, right? The tight end coach is the same. The running back coach is the same. The uh, Pat, or the assistant head coach, who's Kevin Petulo, is the same. Right, the uh, wide receiver coach is the same. The offensive line coach is the same. TJ has moved up in his role to assistant offensive line coach. So there are a lot of similarities in, in coaching styles and coaching staff, um, and some of the things that we're doing with with little tweaks here and there. I would also say, and this isn't related to Jalen. You know, the the hardest part about continuity in the NFL from front office from a coaching staff is that you win, you lose people. You lose, you lose people. And so it's really hard um, to keep a lot of good people in place for a long period of time. This is nothing about Jalen, but just in general. So, um, you know, it's just probably a little bit different than, than uh, other industries where it's hard to do that. And, of course, I'm sitting here. And <laughs> what are your thoughts Thanks, on the, uh, the Giants' hard knocks? Um, the Giants aren't hard knocks? <laughs> my thoughts we got we got we got to mind our own business i think um you know we got we got enough on our plate uh than worrying about everyone else um and from from my perspective every day i come in here and and there's things that we got to do to make sure that we're we're doing the right thing and we're getting better and so it's hard for me to really uh, judge what anyone else is doing
Are you managing having lost Cooper for three weeks? Sorry, Cooper, do you have any plans for him? Well, obviously, it sets him back. You know, right? Uh, to you know, not be out here the first three weeks. But we we're, we're uh, we were excited about him when we drafted him. We were excited about the things that he did during OTAs and the off-season work, and we're still excited about him. He's going to have to take his mental. He's going to have to get a lot of mental reps um, these next uh, couple weeks uh, that he'll be that he'll be out rehabbing that injury, um, and he'll do that. I, I'm I'm confident in the person that that he'll do that. He's going to have to get, but he's going to have to work hard at, at, at that. And then, you know, make some – and then be able to come back when it's his turn, time to come back, when that injury's healed itself up, and, and then get those uh, physical reps. I'm, I'm really confident that he'll do that, though, um, you know, because we, we've spent so much time on the, on the person uh, as well as the player and excited about that, that he'll do that, um, you know, what he needs to do in the classroom. And I, I would just add – I would just add to that – I'm sorry, Coach. I would just say that also, you know, yeah, we're bummed. You know, that's our second-round pick. We want to see him out here on the first day. But we also think that this guy's going to be with us for a long time. And so um, we have tremendous confidence um, in his ability to pick things up and to come back and um, kind of keep running. And obviously it's a long season, and we're counting on him. How you see guys run three times yeah, I, I think it starts with ownership. I think it starts with with Jeffrey's uh, ability to let us sign guys early and, and to try to get out ahead of things, um, which we couldn't do without his help and his support. You know, so I think he deserves the credit on this. Um, listen, again, you're dealing with 91 guys. Like, you're going to have issues. It's not going to be perfect. Um, and I, and I, actually, I, I actually thought what Fred Warner said was, was really freaking unbelievable, where it's like the better you get, the more of those issues you're going to have. You know, So when you're a good team, you know, people are gonna be responsible for making you a good team, and those players are going to want to be compensated that way, those coaches, those front office personnel. And so – I think it's just the nature of a business, you know. I think that um, obviously, you know, the the key for us has been to go to guys early and, and try to get ahead of those things. But it's not perfect, and I'm sure, you know, sitting here, we'll have issues going forward. And um, you know, I I think that it, it's hard to understand, you know, what goes on in those situations from other teams because we're sitting here with kind of our own issues and our own situations. As you go into camp here, are you looking at, at a Beckham primarily at guard or tackle, and are you looking at Brad Barrett you know, at safety or guard? Again, versatility is going to be key for, for guys. And so, you know, we'll see as the camp, as camp goes along. Um, <clears throat> but... You know, Makai is going to have to be able to do both, and, and James is going to have to be able to do both. And so, looking forward to to seeing some of that with those guys. And uh, but, like I said, that that's fluid as it as it goes on. Uh, you'll see some of that out here today. Yeah, really excited to get out here and see the candidates that we have. Uh, we brought in guys that um, we think have talent and the ability to contribute for us, but. Uh, to sit here and say like that that's not something we're going to be watching every day and seeing who step up and, and how the chemistry is with Jalen it's important you know and I think that you look at it uh, throughout the league um, that position's an important position uh, we brought in guys in free agency we we drafted a couple of guys and um, I think it's it's something that we're going to be watching among other things daily and, and see who steps up well, right away. I mean, every everything's being evaluated. Everything they do, the conditioning test was evaluated. The way they came back was evaluated. The way they're going to practice with helmets is going to be evaluated. The way they practice with, and and the way they walk through is going to be evaluated. So every competition starts it has it started in OTAs and it's going to continue here. Now this is football. Right, and so when those pads come on, it's it's different, right? And especially for certain positions, it changes completely of when you have the pads on and when you don't have the pads on. So um, everything's evaluated. Everything competition is being is being happening. That's a core staple of who we are as a, as a program. Compete, compete, toughness, all those different all those different things because 
you know, that's what we base our program on. Um, but, you know, naturally, some positions step up even more when the pads come on. Yeah, we'll see. Um, you know, obviously, don't have to release a depth chart yet. Uh, you know, don't have to say what our plans are, just like we don't have to say what our plans are for our end of game defense. That would be something that that we that we are continuing to work through. Um, and you know, obviously, we'll see as we go. And uh, looking forward to to today. And you know, Tyler will start out there at the right guard position today as we as we start. Um, but you know, we'll see how that goes. Nick, you've talked about that thirty thousand foot view you have now, um, and I know you. You're constantly evaluating things, but it is a little bit of a different role. Did you come into this day one with one or two different things to say, hey, now I can do this a little bit more, now I can focus? You know, obviously, it, it, the way you come out here and, it, like, I'm going to be coaching guys up, right? And that's that's what's fun. You're going to be able to go, like, but I feel like I've been doing that since, you know, even though um, – I was te only with the offense, and I wouldn't say only with the offense, like, but like, yeah. I mean, it's just I'm just looking forward to getting out here and coaching and coaching guys up, and it doesn't matter what position, whether it's you know Paris Campbell or whether it's uh, Rick Lovato or you know I don't have a ton of great coaching points for the long snapper. That's not Who my. Who walks expertise. by next will be the next name called out. <laughs> You know, or, you know, whoever it is. But, um, you know, I'm just looking forward to getting back out there, coaching guys up, and then getting in the film room and, and you know, kind of living out our core values. I, you know, obviously we've spent a lot of time on that and really going to keep that close to the vest, obviously, um, you know, because uh, that's new for everybody. Um, you know, everyone essentially is year one coordinator uh, for the, the, the new kickoff and the kickoff return. And so we'll, we'll keep a lot of that close to the vest, but I'm really confident in our special teams coaches. You know, we did a we you know, we've continually gotten better at special teams throughout these past three years. Michael Clay deserves a ton of credit. He's done an unbelievable job. He's a great young coach who works daily to try to get better. The guys love Mike, uh, Coach Clay. Um, you know, the players that play for him play their, their butts off for him. Um, and that's just a testament to him, Coach Panunzio, Coach Tyler Brown, you know, Coach Seeley, and just the guys that have been here uh, helping us, uh, um, you know, continuing to improve. But looking forward to the new challenge of, of – that element of the game because it's going to be new for everybody, but we'll keep a lot of that close to the vest as we go. So long, you guys have rotated uh, a lot along the defensive line. Vic's history seems to be to lean a little bit more heavily on his top guys. How do you find Tommy Brown? Yeah, first I'd like to give Coach a lot of credit for incorporating crowd noise into our press conferences this year for our players. Got to be uh, able to focus <laughs> in stressful times. So. Um, yeah, I, I think obviously you have to adjust to whoever the coordinator is and what they do. It, it, in a lot of ways, it's exciting, you know, to see what our guys can do. Uh, we have a lot of young players, uh, certainly in the interior of our defensive line, um, that should be able to play maybe a little bit higher percentage of the snaps. But you still need guys rotating. You still need good players. You know, I think it's it's always been – important to us to have a, a, a lot of defensive linemen who can play at a high level through the course of the year and that can come in and rotate. Um, that's not going to change. Um, we'll look exactly the same where maybe, you know, you're taking a number that's 55 or 60 and now you're at 65 or 70. Probably not. Uh, I think also uh, that's why the conditioning is so important. That's why our players coming into, into camp into great shape, knowing that they're going to play more. And, and I think it's all going to be player dependent, you know, on how they're playing. But, um, you know, it's, it's something that's probably a little bit different, but not significantly different. And, it, and Vic Fangio hasn't been, just adding to what Howie said, Vic Fangio has been a great quarter, coordinator in this league. And we're not talking 10 years, 20, 20 years. We're talking three decades worth of being an unbelievable coach. And, and so you don't do that unless you adapt to the players that you have and you adapt your schemes, you adapt to the, your surroundings, you adapt to the way the game's changing. And we feel good about, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, we feel good about our depth. You know, I know Vic feels good about our depth and looking forward to guys like, you know, Marlin and Morrow, you know, those, you know, those guys continuing to develop and, 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 and play a good role. You know, those guys, uh, particularly those two guys show, have shown toughness. They've shown their hard work throughout the off season. They showed, they came back in great shape and I'm looking forward, 
you know, to seeing those guys go out there and practice and, and, and having good, good, good camps. And one of the things, Bo, too, I think, you know, for us, we've been very fortunate here where we've really given our young players kind of um, the ability to, to, to kind of develop and not play as much. I'm really excited um, to see the opportunity for those guys going forward because of where we are. Um, obviously, we have a lot of high-paid players here. Um, there's great opportunity for young players for us going forward, and I think we have the right players here. Um, that's one of the exciting things about this camp is, is seeing these young players get an opportunity to carve out a role, um, how significant that role is. Um, because I think, you know, you look at our sport, you look at a lot of different sports, and there are opportunities for young players to develop, and you don't really know how they're going to develop and how they're going to play until they get the opportunity. And because of the teams we've had in the past couple of years, which had obviously been good, you know, some of those young players haven't had as big a role. So um, I'm really excited about that and watching that. Obviously, I'm biased. You know, uh, we brought those guys here, but it'll be fun to watch. In terms of the secondary, last year lots of injuries. How much more prepared is this secondary for this season? And in relation to how Vic uses that, is it also equipped for his system? Well, we'll see. You know, obviously we got to go with what we see here going forward. Um, we brought in a lot of new people into our secondary. We thought it was an area that we had to address. Um, I'm really excited again to see those guys go out and play. Um, I think, you know, I didn't do a good enough job last year uh, fortifying the secondary, and, and it showed with our depth. Our best teams have had our best depth with our best players, um, and I'm ready to call plays in hostile environments after this press conference. <laughs> At this time last year, you viewed Kobe as the top linebacker. Where is he now in the this season, both from um, a mobilization perspective and health wise that's going to be something that's a great competition. That's going to be a great competition to play out. I really, I believe, you know, we've added some great guys in uh, free agency and the draft. I'm really excited. I mean, you get, you look at some of the things and, you know, we'll never say, hey, these are the positions we're excited about the battles at. But you like, sometimes you, Howie and I talk about it, like, man, I can't wait yeah. to see that linebacker position. We feel really good about the guys that have been added and the guys that were that were back from last year and like just so excited to see how that and how that goes. Now couldn't Kobe came back in great shape, uh, worked his butt off. He said to me yesterday, man, are we putting the pads on tomorrow? Um, when I when I walk past him, you know, I know he's ready. I know he's ready mentally. I know he's ready physically. I'm excited to see him, and I'm excited to see that position. I think I think I broke that rule talking about a couple of positions. I'm excited about right. Uh, you know, I think for us, we have tremendous confidence in Nicobe. You know, that's why we drafted him. Um, it, that doesn't change, uh, and sometimes it's because of how much you liked him throughout the process and bringing him here. Um, so we're really excited about him. He's got the right mentality. There's no question in my mind um, what his contributions were to one of the best defenses in the history of college football. Um, I know that from watching the tape. I know that from talking to the coaches. And then the opportunity is there. You know, the opportunity is at that position, I think. Um, you know, we're excited to see what that brings. Um, obviously, it's a position that in Philadelphia, we understand, comes under a little bit more of the microscope, and um, that's probably warranted. Yeah, I, I've been fortunate to be with Jalen now coming on my fourth year. You know, um, I think he's got tremendous energy, tremendous work ethic. Um, you know, just like all of us, everything that um, he feels like he can continue to work on, he will do. Um, you know, this is a guy that obviously has uh, brought us tremendous success since he's been our starting quarterback, has played at a tremendously high level. Um, I have tremendous confidence in him that whatever he has to do to continue being an MVP candidate, he will do. All right. Thanks, folks. Thank you.